talking about reflective blogging. First off, what is blogging? You've probably already heard of it, but just in case, blogging is a type of informal writing that anyone can post online. Many bloggers have a blog, which is effectively a website with all of their writings appearing in chronological order, with the most recently posted material at the top. Blogs can be on any topic, from personal journals to super specific business analysts from experts in banking. Whatever you want to write about, you can do it for free and using quick and easy tools. Blogging is especially useful for reflective writing, as it not only lets you create a record of your progress through whatever it is you're reflecting on, but it also allows others to read about your experiences too. Reflective blogging is a really good way of making sense of all of the new information that you may be grappling with, whether that's through a dedicated course or your first steps into a new career. I started my professional blog when doing the 23 Things course for librarians. We had to write blog posts about all of the different things we learned about as a way of making sense of it all, as well as logging what we did. I'm still using that blog today, and it has gone from something I set up as a one-time deal to something I use to talk about talks, training, and other professional stuff that I go to. It's a great record for me to look back on and can often be helpful for people who weren't able to make the event that I'm reflecting on. Your blog will evolve and change just as you do, and what you started out writing about might not be what you're writing about several months from now, which is actually quite fun. So, now for the science bit. There are several different models of reflective practice that can help you with your own reflective blogging, but we'll cover one of them, Kolb's learning cycle. You experience a thing, whatever that might be, such as investigating a new research tool. You then observe and reflect on that experience. So maybe how using the new tool made you feel. It might have been frustrating and difficult or exciting and new. You then start to develop your ideas on the experience. So maybe ways in which you could use a tool for your own work or even finding some how-to guides to make your use of the tool more effective and less annoying. You then test your ideas in practice. So you use the tool for a new project and find out how, the how it works the second time around. Maybe you share this new tool with your friends or colleagues and experience it together. And then the cycle continues. You have a new experience which kickstarts everything off again. So this cycle can be applied to reflective blogging where you experience something such as a really cool talk. You observe and reflect about why you enjoyed it so much. You then start to develop your own ideas and interpretations of the content of the talk. And then you test those ideas out, which can be as simple as writing them down and then sharing the whole process as a blog post. The key to good reflective writing is to remember the three W's, what, so what, and what next. First off, what, is a description of what happened and who was there. So what is interpretation, so why was this important or significant and what does it all mean? Can it be explained and is that event or experience different to one that you've had before? What next looks at the outcome, so what have you learned about your experience and what can you do with this experience in the future? As reflective writing is a real assessment of an experience, it is useful for you and others to be as honest as possible. If you're blogging, this may be publicly available, which may not be a problem, but may also make you edit yourself a bit. Write in whatever way makes you comfortable, but also write as openly as possible about your thoughts and emotions. If you are going to edit yourself, be careful to pick out key elements of the experience, rather than just describing every detail, as it might not always be helpful. Finish off by thinking about the future and how you can apply your experience to it. Don't worry if your reflections seem obvious or simple observations. Everyone's ideas may seem obvious to them, but may also be light bulb moments for others. So, get blogging. There's a link in the description to a guide on how to set up a WordPress blog account. WordPress is pretty easy to use and has lots of options to tailor your blog to how you want it to look but of course, there are lots of other free blogging platforms out there, so have fun!